Okay, so our next uh, speaker is Aswaraj, and he didn't put his last name on the on the first slide. So I, um, what is your last name? Sorry, Swaraj. Uh, it's uh, Swaraj Vatsa. Yeah, you should have put it on the front page. Okay, <laughs> and so, he, will, uh, he will talk about multi-objective Bayesian optimization over high-dimensional search spaces. Go, go ahead, Swaraj. So uh, the problem statement is uh, uh, there are various scenarios in which we have to optimize multiple objectives, but it is uh, very computationally expensive. And uh, we have to find a pato optimal solution. What it means is that uh, so because, because an optimal, so a pareto optimal solution is a thing means so one, it is actually a a result which is better than all the other ones is not actually better than, but it is almost, but it is equal to all the other one, but it is better than at least one of them. And means say we have uh, 10 different objectives that we need to optimize. And we say that a solution X is a Pareto optimal if it is uh, equal to or greater than all those 10. It means in 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 uh, all those uh, in all those ten different objectives. Mm -hmm. So what I mean is that say we have x one to x ten, and we find an answer r that uh, that answer r should be good in all those ten. Say 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 we found hundred different answers to those ten different objectives, then ninety ninth say the ninety ninth answer is the Pareto optimal if it is better than or rest all the hundred or it is equal to all the 100, it means it is not worse than any of them. Mm -hmm. So basically, as far as you're talking about like having a number of loss function and you are saying we are trying to uh, decrease the loss function for all of those, uh, all of the loss function, not just one, right? That's the idea? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So if, if one of them is, uh, if all of them decreased, but one is increased, that's not the optimal solution. Yeah, yeah, correct, 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 correct. Okay, absolutely. And uh, this kind of thing is uh, uh, very useful in various aspects. Like uh, it says that, and uh, and if we have to design the wing of an aircraft, uh, then we have to optimize things like, like the lift, drag, and stability subject to various constraints such as wing area maximum stress the minimum thickness or 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 uh, any of these different constraints so we are actually trying to uh, maximize uh, the performance of uh, two or three different things which can actually bring down the other one also so maybe if we try to increase the performance of one it tries to decrease the performance of the other so this is the multi objective optimization scenario and uh, in this they are trying they are actually saying that we would use bayesian optimization to solve these these kinds of problems uh, the first is uh, the first i would start to talk about bayesian optimization for single objective problem like in case of machine learning where we try to decrease the loss function uh, with respect to different hyperparams this can be an example of this or in thermodynamic system, we try to decrease the enthalpy of the system itself. So uh, what they say is that uh, when we try to decrease, uh, when we try to maximize the output of a system, because this is a single objective function based on different constraint, a Bayesian optimization can be used. So how a Bayesian optimization works, and this is that we use two different functions. One is the surrogate function, one is the acquisition function. So what is a surrogate and what is an acquisition function is actually told in the next set of graphs. But what it actually does is that we have a specific set of initial data points. We try to fit a function on that. Then the acquisition function tells us that, okay, now we have something. Uh, then we actually try to find the posterior distribution based on some initial data points and then with and then the acquisition function try to use those uh, use that posterior distribution to find the next point which should actually be tried which might act 
which might decrease the cost further. So what it says is that uh, we have some initial, so we throw some initial random points, we define a prior, and then we find a posterior based on that, and the acquisition function used, uses that posterior to find the most, the next most likely point that would decrease the cost further. And when we have that, uh, and why are we doing is that, say we have a, a set of hyperparams and we are training a model. This is a very costly thing to do. So trying a set of hyperparams and then training a model on that is a very costly operation. So we want to do it as less as possible. Uh, in current scenarios, we do grid search where we try all types of combination, but it is not always helpful. So what it says is that try some uh, uh, some initial with, with, with some initial set of uh, random combinations. We find the performance of that. We define a prior on that. Then we, the help of acquisition function, we actually try to find that what should be the next set of uh, hyperparams that we should try that would make the cost further down. And this is the acquisition function. Okay, and this, so, so I, I think I'm understanding what you're saying. You're, you're doing it again, uh, meta learning, right? So you're trying to go through the space of hyperparameters. You've already done some tests and you figure out what your loss, uh, how, how your system performs for those hyperparameters. And your question is what should be the next set of hyperparameters to try? Yes? Yeah, 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 yeah oh, exactly. Okay, so and how, how, do you, how do you do exactly that? So that's what I mean. I understand the setup. Uh, you you yeah, tried so... a whole bunch of hyperparameters and now here it is time I have to choose a new one. Uh, and so how do you do that? So actually, uh, Bayesian optimization uh, uses uh, GPR as the surrogate function. So, th th so this is the Gaussian process that it uses. So say for initial some sets of uh, points, where how we define the prior is uh, by throwing some random points from the uh, domain of the hyperparams that we have. And mm -hmm. then we define that prior and the prior is defined with the help of the mean and the kernel. Kernel is just a covariance matrix because this is just a... a no, that I understand. Multi. That's initial conditions. Now, my question is not about that. So you already mm -hmm. started with some initial condition <clears throat> and now you're, you, you already uh, like measured your uh, loss function for those hyperparameters. Now you're trying to get a new proper parameter. Uh, so what's so, the procedure so getting that? Act, so actually uh, to do that, there are various ways to do this. And what all those ways try to do is that uh, there are, they try to do two stuffs. One is exploration. So what they say is that where we have most less amount of data, where we are most uncertain, uh, pick up, uh, pick up. Yeah, well, new... that's the question, <laughs> how to define where you have the least amount of data. Uh, so that's the question, right? So what this say is that, uh, say this is the uh, function that you, this is the objective function that you have. Mm -hmm. And this is the distribution that you get by throwing just some uh, points onto it. Mm -hmm. So so what, does, so what the acquisition function does is that where we have the highest value of sigma, we take those, points as the next set of input points. Yeah, well, you have you can have a highest value, but then it depends how you stretch your X. Yes, so uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. understand that you're saying that uh, you may have like very short uh, space of hyperparameters that you think you know a lot about this, but this is where the loss function changes rapidly. And so sure you want to go there actually. Um, and so there has to be some kind of a measure based yeah, on what you've absolutely. already so, seen what's the best next uh, set of hyperparameters to try. So the thing is this, that this paper, Doctor, that it does not talk specifically about the acquisition function. It just says that we use one of those acquisition functions. Mm -hmm. so, the, so, so these are the different uh, acquisition functions which we can use, but it does not talk what they do. and how they do it, but I have attached a link which actually mm -hmm. talks about all of those different functions and how they actually try to use these prior to actually find the next set of points. Okay, okay. So this is not what the paper about. I thought that was the paper about. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. So then they try to actually find that what should be the next valid point, and uh, this is how they 
So by this, they actually just, uh, we just explore various less sets of points and we actually are able to find a very good fit that what should be the optimal case of the hyperparams that would make the loss function go actually down. Mm -hmm. This was for the single objective. Then uh, we are actually talking about multi-objective. Then there is an algorithm for that NSGA. This is a genetic algorithm. And uh, what it says is that uh, we just throw some initial points and uh, then we find the, uh, and then we, and, and then we find the actual performance of those initial points based on the different uh, multi-objectivity that, that we have. And uh, then we actually do the sorting of them. What this uh, sorting actually means is that we actually make various front fronts or, or we can call them level one, two, three. On the first level are all those uh, different combinations which are not dominated by any other set of combinations. The level two actually contains of only those points which are dominated by the first one. The third actually consists of only which are dominated by the level number two. And uh, then we actually in all those uh, different fronts or all those different levels, we actually find the spread also. And based on so, and then we actually pick up those uh, points which are on the top levels and have the highest spread. And then we just uh, uh, mix match those uh, hyperparams of those top level points, which is uh, just the, uh, so we just mix match those hyperparams of those uh, top levels, which are uh, very far apart to find the best set of combinations so that we can explore more and more. So this is the genetic variant of uh, how we try for multi-objectivity and uh, this- So this is multi-objectivity for training yeah. of hyperparameters, yes? Yeah, 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 correct, correct. Okay, so you can have multi-objectivity just for regular training. And so we can still talk about this, but you're saying, no, I want to have multi-objectivity for training hyperparameters. Uh, and that's what this paper is about, yes? Yeah, 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 yeah. correct, correct. Uh, correct. Okay, so maybe my question is more general. Why not just form all this multiple objectives, form uh, one uh, loss function? Uh, and then uh, I understand that you do not want any of those objectives to ever increase and so instead of having kind of a linear sum of those have kind of sub exponential suppression of any of them uh, uh decrease decre increasing uh, so absolutely sum of exponents yeah, yeah 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 actually that is the thing so this nsga2 algorithm is the thing means which is which was the state of the art when they actually proposed the paper yeah, and so, then I mean, what I'm mi missing here is the mathematics that shows that this is makes sense. So, uh, yeah, those are just so, words, right? You want to show that this uh, or or that multi-objective learning optimization makes sense, not just I tried this and this works. So that's what's missing here: the mathematics behind this. Yeah, the complete paper is very much experimental. They have not any. Uh, Analytics. Well, I don't actually see, see experiments here either, like comparison of I try this. So, or so like yeah, that. so it's uh, at the end, they actually compare those different models and say that which one works better on a different case of problems. So this is one case mass, the one is different problem. And then this is a third problem. And then they right, talk but about still, I mean, like, even though we have two lines here to actually understand what they concluded, we need to first understand algorithms behind one line and then algorithm behind the second line and then see what's the difference and then hopefully rewrite it in a mathematical coherent way so we can actually make sense out of all that but i understand maybe not all the papers wants to go into the math so yeah so means in this graph they actually talked about two of the main methods one one what one is nsga2 which was the state of the art they said that at that point and uh, one is uh, morbo which they actually introduced Mm -hmm. And both of them are very much experimental. So this was NSGA2, which was generated, which was just a genetic algorithm. And then they actually introduced a new algorithm, which is uh, MORBO, which is multi-objective regionalized Bayesian algorithm. So NSGA doesn't use Bayesian optimization at all. As you, as you actually saw that in this, there is no Bayesian optimization. This is just a direct 
genetic algorithm. We just try well, to sample. Well, also for the Bayesian, my understanding Bayesian should involve some calculation of probabilities and distributions showing that what makes sense to do. And they're just saying Bayesian is not enough, right? There has to be calculation showing. Ab absolutely, Professor. So the thing was, they, they did not even put what was Bayesian optimization. This yeah. all I put yeah. from some different papers to actually show what is Bayesian optimization. And then, so what they had in this the paper was just this slide means this is just the algorithm that they have more sure. so 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 what they say is that uh, say if we have a high uh, means uh, if say if the domain space is too large and uh, when we find the posterior the distribution itself we are actually find the inverse of the covariance matrix and that is o and and the time complexity of that is O of NQ, where N is the number of data points itself. So it becomes larger and larger as we have more and more points. And mm -hmm. in the, and in these, and, 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 and when we are talking about a high dimensional space, we have a lot of points. So what they say is that let's divide the space itself and do Bayesian optimization on each of those uh, different regions of the space. And then yeah, actually, I, I don't know what that means, right? So <laughs> without yeah. formulas, I don't know what that uh, means. But okay. So 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 what this say is that we throw some initial points. We actually find the uh, how does that point actually uh, how good is that point based of based on the HVI index? HVI index, as you said, is that we just combine all those five six different objectives into one. And well, uh, there are different ways to do it. That's what I'm saying. I mean, there are two things that missing here to describe how to combine things into one. That's okay. And then how to explore the space of the hyperparameters. Uh, and that those are the two, two different things. And, you know, previous talk was about exploring it uh, by bootstrapping. Uh, now here, here it is some other way of exploring, which, which I don't uh, understand, but I guess it, it is more of a sudden jump from one place to another, depending of where the information about the loss function is least available. So you kind of learn more about it, something like that. But, but the, how it is- So George wanted happening. to say something, go ahead, George. Yeah, something that might help is, is that the objective of this, uh, if, if I, to try to quote the, to paraphrase the abstract is to like many of these formulas they don't scale well with many different things that you're trying to optimize for but more mm -hmm. pro is supposed to scale really well with many things that you're optimizing for and so slight like, seems like it's a bit of a different objective than the than the last paper this one's focused on scaling well with lots of different oh no no i understand no that i understood like in in the uh, if you go to the space of mm, infinite dimensions, right, many dimensions for this hyperparameters, there will be a different algorithm that would be more useful for you to go through. You wouldn't be going, you know, locally. You would want to uh, jump around more stochastic. I understand that, but what I'm missing from my perspective is to actually see uh, what the actual mathematics of the, you know, exploration of the space of hyperparameters here is. How do you actually, uh, given given some previous information of what you explored in this hyper, how do you decide that next step? And I understand initially you just randomly start jumping around uh, and seeing, but but then you you have to come up with some um, way way of doing this. Yeah, I, I I think I think this is just something that's probably missing. Maybe it's not in the paper at all. They just do uh, some. Assuming through the paper, maybe, there's not much math going on. Yeah, exactly. Maybe they just do uh, numerical tests and say here, here, you no, know, it works better. It works worse. Okay. Uh, other any other punchlines? As far yeah. As? So so uh, so it says that we just uh, have so we just did means so we just have the space divided into different hypercubes and we just train the different gps into that and and we just try to optimize it right okay. this is just it is and there is no mathematics in the entire paper means i think more, more the more you would be interested in the thing where we where the actually where in the paper where they actually define the acquisition function itself no, I mean, it's not um, interesting. It's like, uh, you know, you want to understand what is the test? What is it telling us? What, what are we learning? What have we learned from this paper, from the result of this paper? 
Uh, so Absolutely. for now, I cannot yeah. answer that question because uh, I, I don't. I, I know what they are talking about, but I don't know what the result is. But... Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, thanks, Swaraj. Any other questions, comments? All right, let me stop the recording.